Hello and welcome to this new webinar. I'm Manu Lucio and I'm here with Jesus Gonzalez. Hi, hi everybody. Today we are very happy to present the new Plastic SEM integration with Unity. It's something we have been working during the last months and it's finally here. As part of our, our audience is new to Plastic SEM, we are going to start talking about plastic very shortly, about how what's plastic and how it can help you developing games. So, uh, Plastic SEM is a distributed version control system, very similar to Git but different. It's fully distributed, but it can also work in a centralized mode, and both of them mix it. Plastic SEM allows branching and merging in a very easy and intuitive way. Some other systems, like Perforce, lacks in this area. The server can perform currently even when hundreds of clients are running operations, so when it works in a distributed mode, it's really fast. We will see it later, but Plastic SEM brings a nice way to perform all the SEM's operations. Of course, everything can be also done using the command line, but a Wii allows new users to start using advanced features from the first moment. Now we are going to talk about the common problems that Plastic SEM can solve when it's used with Unity. The first one is something we heard that is called the Assets Nightmare, and it's when you are adding new files to the source version control system and you forget to add also the meta file. With the plugin, this won't happen again since we automatically add them to the uh, Plastic SEM repository when you are trying to add new files. The same happens when you are modifying a regular file and the meta gets also changed. You will see that at the time you commit the file, change the meta uh, will also be committed. Uh, the second big problem that game studios are facing is the lack of support for big binary files. It is not able to handle them correctly and performance is not fast enough. With plastic you won't have known of these problems. The third one is the ability to have uh, to perform exclusive checkouts or logs over files when you are working in a distributed way. Even in a distributed way the logs are shared along sites allowing you to work safe and isolated. And finally Due to branching and merging with plastic is so fast and easy, the development team is not freezed in trunk when the game is released. They can just branch and continue working. So, what do you need to get it working? The first thing is obviously Unity, and the second piece is Plastic SEM. You can grab our installer for our, for our website, and if you complete the evaluation guide, then you can choose for free one of our free t-shirt designs. The plugin is automatically installed with Plastic SEM, so you don't need to install something else to get it working. The installation process is extremely easy. Clicking in the next button and choosing the authentication mode is everything you need to do. So now uh, is the interesting part of the demo is the is where we are going to be using Unity and the new plugin and let me switch to the Unity view. Okay, so uh, this is the regular uh, project that comes along with the with the Unity. is the is the sample Angry Bots project. So first thing we can choose using Plastic SEM is the Div Immerse tool. Uh, clicking in Edit, Preferences, External Tools, we can choose from the Perforce Merge, P4 Merge, to the Plastic SEM Merge. So this is the first feature we allow you to change when you choose Plastic as, you, as your version control system. So once we accept this, the next step is mapping the Unity project with Plastic SEM. In order to do that, just click Edit again, Project Settings, Editor, and by default you will see that the version control mode is the original and plain in vanilla asset server. So choose Plastic SEM and now is when you have to choose a repository name and a workspace name. The repository name, or actually the repository is going to be the common area where the files and all the history is going to be storage. 
and the workspace is something that resides in your hard drive. So it's like a snapshot of a repository, of a given moment of the repository. So uh, for this example, I'm going to be creating a new repository, which is going to be called Angry Demo. And the workspace name, for example, is going to be Angry Demo Workspace. That's everything you need. Then click Connect, and now the status is connected. As you can see, uh, everything, uh, all the decorators of the file has been changed. Uh, that means that everything is in local, which is, means that it's not still in the, in the version control system. Here you can review and overlay legends for every single item that you will be seeing in the project uh, tree. So uh, we will explain lately, uh, one by one, because we are going to be reviewing every single state. But just for you to know, you can review all the information here. Okay, so now that the, my project is binded with Plastic SCM, the next thing is opening the Plastic SCM view. Uh, in order to do that, click in Window, Version Control, and this is where all our changes that are about to be committed into Plastic SCM are going to be shown. Uh, in this moment, only the files that are uh, regarding the project settings are shown in this one. So let me move this window. I will dock it here. And I'm going to be performing right now my very first commit into Plastic SCM. Right click in the top, in the, in the root item of this tree and submit. This is the project's uh, ADD operation. So just add in the project, click submit, and everything will be currently committed to the server. Once everything is finished, you will see this overlay label saying finished successfully. Close this view, and now a very interesting feature from Plastic SCM is that you can show the branch explorer. The branch explorer is like a history uh, layout, uh, and it will tell you all, all the, the project uh, uh, history uh, with this, uh, these uh, blue bubbles, which represents the change sets, and uh, this square, which is the branch. We are currently working in the main branch, and we only have two change sets. The first one is the change set number zero, which is empty. It's the default one. And our house icon uh, shows us that we are working in this change set, which is the currently one that I have just uh, created. If I double-click it, I will see all the project settings that has been added into the repository. That's all. OK, so now that we have the project settings in the repository, the next step is adding the rest of the project into Plastic SCM. In order to do that, click in the Assets view, for example, which is the top view of the project. And inside Version Control, you will find the common actions you can use with Plastic SCM. In this moment, we want to mark all the files pending to be added to Plastic. So we click in Mark to Add, and you will see that uh, Plastic is performing in the background operation. Now we have all the items pending to be committed. You can review that we have all the project pending to be submitted. So let's, let's do it. Let's submit it. This is going to be full project, ADD operator, and let's submit it. Okay, now we are pushing all the content from our local list to Plastic SCM. So every, every member of our development team will be able to download this content into Plastic SCM. Okay, now it's finished. We close it. Let me open again the branches Explorer just to show you that we have just created a new change set. Well, now we are having three change sets. If you click in Options, you will be able to see all the metadata of the, of the Plastic SCM repository. And in this case, I'm clicking in a change set. So this is the change set number, the owner, uh, the creation date, and so on. And of course, the change set comment, full project ADD operation. 
Okay, so let's go now and let's uh, create some changes. Okay, uh, I'm going to be creating a new change. This is going to be a very easy one over this file, scripts editor, uh, clean project. So when I'm about to edit a file, uh, you can normally uh, check out it first. Okay, although you can also go ahead and modify it. It's going to be working at the same uh, equally, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to be using the checkout operation, but as, as I said, you can directly modify it. So in order to check out, you can click in this area in the right side, or you can right click, version control, check out. You can see that now we are having a red uh, tick. That means that the file is checked out. As you can see not only the file is checked out but also the meta file it's also in our outgoing changes so uh, let's double click it and I will be changing for example um, uh, this one is going to be from public to private I'm going to save it and of course you can give the content just to review your changes sorry And as we are using plastic and we chose our own diff tool to, to show the differences between revision, this is why you are getting this new window. This is our diff tool and you can see that the change uh, was from private to public. So uh, if you are wondering which one uh, is the copy on your hard drive, you can review the title of the view. Uh, this is the, the one. Uh, that you are having in your workspace. It's having the mind decorator at the end, and this one is having the head decorator. So the, the one on, on your left side is the one you are currently working on, and the one in your right side is the one in the repository. So uh, let's close it, and now we are free to commit this new change. As we did with the edit items, it's very easy to click submit, and uh, first change is going to be the comment. Let's submit it, and that's all. Okay, we close it, and if we open the branch explorer, as before, we have a new change set with a new comment, and obviously, it's having the new content. Okay, so this is uh, what uh, Unity called outgoing changes. These are the changes that are from my local drive to the repository. But we also can have incoming changes. These incoming changes are the ones that are coming from the repository to the uh, local drive of my workspace. Okay? So we are going to be simulating uh, this behavior, opening plastic and creating a new uh, workspace to be simulating two developers working at the same branch. In this case, we are working in the main branch or trunk in other SCM systems. So uh, let's open Plastic. At the at the well, this is the the repository I was using before the demo, so it's obviously not finding the demo. Uh, so this uh, my workspace, angry demo workspace uh, that I have just created, but I need a new one. So in order to do that, I'm going to be creating another one, angry demo workspace number two in any path of my uh, of my hard drive. So um, last thing I need to do is selecting the repository I want to work with. In this case, is angry demo. So click OK and we demo and in the items view if I now update my workspace I will get everything from the repository. I'm, I'm doing this test uh, from my local machine but if uh, another developer working with the same server downloads the content it's going to be the same operation. If I open the branch explorer I will see I will review the same information I can see in Unity. Okay first change of the public to private or public yeah this is the change so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify uh, the same file in parallel. 
So in order to do that, I'm going to go to Assets, uh, Scripts, Editor. I'm going to be modifying Clean Project. So if I check out this file, I'm now able to commit it. So go Finding Changes and Edit it. So for example, let's say that I want to remove the last method, exclude object. I'm going to be moving this file, oh, sorry, this method, from the very bottom of the file to the first method of the class. Okay? And I'm also modify the return to return null. Okay, so this is going to be my change. I save it and now I'm free to commit this one. So move a um, method to top and uh, return null. Okay, so now I commit this change and it's inside the repository. But what happens with Unity? Now Unity is, is one change behind the head of the, of the branch. So if I go to the uh, incoming changes and I refresh the, the view, I can see that I have in one incoming change, which is actually the clean project item. So uh, review this icon. It's a, a green, uh, sorry, a yellow triangle. It means that if I click in this button, this revision is going to be updated into my workspace. But I'm going to be performing uh, a different uh, strategy. I'm going to be uh, modifying at the same time the same file in order to show you how uh, this is handled by the Plastic ASEAN plugin. Uh, because we, as, as, you can, uh, as you can imagine, we will need to merge my local copy with this one that is incoming. So let's go ahead and open the file. As I'm working one change set behind the head, I'm still having the screwed object at the bottom of the file. So uh, for this one, let's say that I'm going to be renaming this uh, method uh, from exclude object to exclude generic object. Okay, just this change. Okay, not complicated, but as you can remember, in the very first change, I move this method to the head of the class and change return path to return null. And in here, in this revision, I'm just changing the name of the method. So let me close this one and let me go back to the uh, this incoming view. If I refresh it, you will see that now I'm not having the, the yellow triangle anymore. I'm having a question mark. Uh, that means that this file, uh, in order to update it into my workspace, I will need it to merge it first. So let's do it. Let's apply the incoming changes to my workspace. I, and you will see that Plastic will say you, OK, in order to put this revision into workspace, I need to merge yours to this one that is incoming. Uh, so uh, this is a very powerful window because, uh, for example, if you explain this merge, you will be able to understand better what's going on. I have my base which is the change set that I, I'm coming from. I have the source, that is the change that my coworker did. And finally, I have the destination, which is in this case is shared by the base because it's uh, the current um, uh, content that I'm loading in my workspace. So let's close this one and process the merge. And this will launch the merge tool, the Plastic SCM merge tool, which is uh, by the way, a semantic merge tool. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have um, uh, several things to um, to show, but it's uh, uh, at the uh, method level. So if I, I can review the source changes, first I have a move operation. Uh, you can see that I move this exclude object from the bottom of the file to the top of the file of the class, and I also change it. And in destination, my changes, what I did is just um, change uh, the name of the, of, the, um, of the method. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, uh, we have to uh, choose. Uh, you want to move it or you want to rename it. In this case, I'm going to keep the rename operation. Okay, so just keep the destination and 
let's that's that's all. Uh, actually, this is automatic merge, and the conflict to solve it's nothing. So let's save it and exit. Now all the conflicts are solved. I have to go back to my outgoing changes because now the merge is solved, but I still need to push the new changes into the repository. Okay, so this is merge from my coworker. And, and that's all. Oh, sorry, the coworker. So submit the files to have it a storage in the workspace and let me open the branch explorer again. In this case, I have a new change set, which is the merge result, and I have a green arrow, which means that this change set has been merged into the head of the branch. If I double click, I can see the only change, which is this blank, nothing more, because the merge was automatic, okay? So uh, that's all. Um, uh, we will be showing right now uh, several things regarding the Plastic SEM integration using the Branch Explorer. If you decide to work in a, in a distributed way, it means that you have to first pull the content from a central server, a Plastic SEM central server, and then you will need to perform some changes locally and finally push them back to the central server or your co-workers server or wherever, okay? In order to do that, you need to perform a replication. It's as simple as right-clicking in the branch, replication, push it into another server. Using these three uh, options, you will be pushing this branch into well, actually, the only one is the, the first one. The, the, the second and the third is if you want to pull new changes from the central uh, branch. If you push it to another one, you will be sending all those changes to the central repository. You can also sync uh, a Plastic SEM repository with Git, but that's another story, and it's, it's, uh, it takes more time to explain. So um, finally, uh, let's go to the, uh, for example, I'm going to be modifying for this test an image because I want to show you uh, some features about plastic SEMs that are pretty cool, but they are not still in Unity. Okay, if you are working with textures or uh, images, you can uh, edit these files. Okay, actually, let me open in the Windows Explorer because I will be using the uh, test pad, the uh, uh, Microsoft Paint to be editing this one. So for example, let's modify this one. For example, uh, this and this, okay? Just an example. But uh, this content using Unity will only give you a binary div, okay? There's nothing, nothing cool about this one because you only see the raw content from one revision to the other. But instead of using this uh, difference window, you can go to plastic. I'm going to be switching to the other workspace. And in the pending changes view, actually, let me check it out. Uh, version control, I need to. It's, you, can, you can, with plastic, you can work in two ways. You can actively say that you want to check out the file, or you can directly modify it. So it's different. Uh, we have two states. The first one is check it out, and the second one is modify it locally. If you want to review the, the, the modify it locally in Plastic SEM, you have to choose the options and show the change items. So now we can see this Angry Bots PNG file. So now if, if we perform the diff operation with Plastic SEM, you will see that it's a, a more advanced option because you can actually see the differences from one revision to the one that you are having in your workspace. So you, this is the side-by-side -side difference, the only on the screen that you can unveil all the differences that we are having in the, in the file, and this uh, very cool view that is only highlighting the real changes. You can swipe the changes. And finally, you can even diff the properties that is having this image, okay? So this is changing the pixel per unit from zero to 3,700, and that's all. 
So uh, although this view is not uh, available in, in Unity, you can open Plastic and review them. Yeah, it's another way to, to be using. But we think that the plugin performs the, the very basic and it's very powerful to start working with uh, Plastic SEM. Uh, and it's it's very cool. And the, the, the very the good point of having this plugin is that the meta files are always going uh, along with the regular file. So you will not be able to forget about committing the meta files because Plastic will do it for you. Okay? So uh, more or less uh, this is everything we want to show you regarding the Plastic SEM integration with Unity. Of course, uh, there's plenty of features that are not still in, in the Unity plugin and they are in Plastic SEM, but that's not a problem because you can use uh, both of them at the same time. For example, in this, in this uh, sample I'm going to be committing the Angry Bots PNG file and the meta at the same time. So uh, this is going to be generating a new change set. If I commit here and I go back to the Unity, I refresh, now I'm not having those changes because they are already in plastic. So it's very cool uh, having this Branch Explorer view in here is very useful because you can uh, review the history, double click a change set, review what happened. And the last thing I want to show you is creating branches from plastic. Okay? The last, uh, the last thing is, is very easy. Uh, creating branches, you should be creating branches only for a stable baselines. So uh, this is not a stable because I cannot see any label in, in this uh, branches blur. So let's label the latest change set, BLO. And now, for example, I can create a, a change set. This is just a, a suggestion. Of course, you can go ahead and create in branches from head. But we do recommend to uh, create your branches from a stable point. So you are completely sure that your branch is working because it's starting from a stable baselines. So let me create a branch. OK. Uh, this is going to be the task 01. Uh, click OK. By clicking OK, the branch will be created. And you can select this option to automatically switch the workspace to this branch. But I'm going to do it in two steps just to show you how to do it, okay? So click OK to create the new branch. Right click in the brand new branch and switch your workspace to this new branch. Okay, now the head house icon is in the new branch because now I'm working I'm isolated in the new branch. So uh, let's go back to a scripts editor, for example. Let's change again this new, this new uh, file. As I told you, you can directly check it out or open it without doing it. And Plastic will be smart enough to identify those things. So public class is going to be no more public. It's going to be internal. And let's close it. OK, as you can see, it is automatically detected as changed. If we refresh the view, we'll be able to commit, submit. It's going to be a change in a branch. Submit it. And what I want to do now is open it again, the branch explorer. And I will switch my workspace to the task of, from the task 01 to the trunk branch, or we call it main in plastic. So let's switch it. And let's go back to the editor. And you can see the public is still there. It is not internal anymore. If we change it, okay, of course, uh, private. private is going to be now the new value of the class. We can change this attribute, submit it. And this is going to be generating a new change set. If I refresh the branch explorer, I have a new change that is having the private change. And I have another one having the internal from public to internal. If I now switch back to the task 01, you will see that we are not going to have the private anymore. We will have internal. 
you can review it here in the left, in the right side of the object. We have internal instead of uh, private. Okay, and of course, if I switch back to main, this value will change from internal to private. Okay, that's the good point working with plastic. Uh, creating branches is pretty easy. Merging is even more easy. So you you don't have any any um, uh, problem to use the uh, the branch per task or any other pattern uh, regarding branches to develop your code. So uh, this is uh, the the last last thing I want to to show you. Now is your turn uh, for the questions. Okay, so please don't be shy. Uh, Jesus is already answering some questions, but now uh, Jesus, if you want to check one of them, you can uh, you can uh, continue asking things. We will be answering all of them and reading. Uh, the question so everybody can um, know uh, what's going on and which one is the which is the question and and the answer okay so please don't be shy and now is your turn you can ask if you want to uh, review any scenario or something regarding plastic or something regarding the planning this is your turn yes we have, yes, we have several questions from Robin from Robin and Benoit and one of them is if we support uh, something similar to Git sub modules, uh, but uh, the answer is yes. But this part is not uh, embedded into the Unity plugin. It can be done from from Plastic SCM. Uh, let's wait to other Unity questions, and after that, uh, we will uh, maybe we can show uh, how to create uh, uh, this kind of, of repositories. I have to say that uh, repositories are all of them in the same levels, uh, but you can uh, link uh, uh, certain directories in your workspace, uh, in your working copy, uh, to a change it in another uh, repository different than the than the main one, simulating something similar to Git submodules, right? But as that being said, uh, we'll show you we'll show you at the end of the uh, of the session. Okay. Another question we have. Is if we support uh, uh, D for big binary files? Manu, can you answer that? Yeah, sure. Uh, we fully support big binary files, so you you don't need to be afraid about adding uh, big files into Plastic SCM because it will be pretty fast, and you will see that it will not affect to the performance of the server. So no problem and. Uh, the last, if you if you feel that the database of Plastic SCM, because we use relational databases, you can choose from SQLite, which is the very uh, the, the very small one uh, from SQL Server or MySQL. If you feel that database is in, is growing and growing, uh, you can archive revisions. So uh, the space of the database will be uh, um, liberated. So. It's it's very it's very uh, plastic SCM the server is very powerful and can handle big binary files with, without any problem. We know that this is a problem for game for game studios, but uh, using for example Git and sometimes perforce because uh, the speed is not very good using uh, big binary files. But with plastic, you will see that you will not have any problem. Okay. Okay. Another question we have is if we support compression or anything other than PNG files. Yes, we actually support a great number of, of uh, image files. Let me show you how you can support them, okay? Because by default we support a great number. If you uh, click in preview tools, if you open the Plastic SM GUI, you go preferences, preview tools, we use image magic preview to support this great number of, of uh, supported stations. So uh, I don't know if we can see the full list here. Yes, uh, so you can review all the list. Even if the one, the file you are trying to leave, is it's not in this list, you can create your own uh, preview. Or, um, and this preview will be used by the, um, the merge tool, okay, and the div tool. 
So if it, if you cannot find your your custom binary file, which is in an image, you can create your one. Uh, it's very easy. We have a blog post in in our forum. Uh, sorry, in in Blogger. So please review. If you search in Google for uh, Plastic SEM custom preview, you will see that you can create your custom preview if the one you are trained to do is is not in this list. Okay, we have another question regarding uh, how to match Unity SEM files. Uh, well, uh, regarding this question, uh, I have to double check with Unity staff. I think this is a, a scenario uh, to use the lock feature, right? So imagine you have a scene, a scene under a directory. Uh, we have to set up a Plastic SEM to, to lock the files when they are checked out. Uh, and you have a file inside this, uh, the directory of the uh, scene. So when you check out the file inside that directory, it will be automatically locked. So nobody else can check out or or submit new changes until uh, the the owner of the lock uh, reverses the releases the the checkout, uh, either submitting changes or reverting them. That being said, I have to uh, to confirm with Unity staff. Uh, maybe we can answer after the, the session or even in the comments uh, uh, when we post the YouTube video of, the, of this webinar, right? Actually, I have something more to say about this lock feature. Uh, if you currently set up the, the lock feature at the, at the server side, you can have a scenario like this, okay? As you can see, uh, I will repeat it just in case some, some of, them, of you uh, didn't see it. In, in this workspace that is working with the Angry Demo, I have this clean project CSR file. I, I have it, it check it out. It means that because I'm using the exclusive block in this repository, it means that nobody else will be able to check it out at the same time. If at the same time uh, we use another workspace emulating another um, a developer, if at the same time I try to check it out, you will see that you will get a nice error uh, explaining that the items are exclusively checked out by uh, what well, the item is a set script editor clean project CSR uh, at this workspace by myself. Okay, so uh, this is uh, regarding our exclusive log uh, feature that I explained in the Presso presentation. Uh, it's very easy to set up if you go to our documentation. You will find out how to how to do it. Okay, we have another question. Uh, uh, Benet also asks if if we have to plan if we plan to have semantic merge for Unity data like scenes or prefabs. Uh, well it's not in the roadmap right now, but we have an, an invoice uh, regarding semantic merge uh, where people uh, submit their uh, ideas on their their willings uh, regarding semantic merge. Also, it it is in the roadmap uh, to to implement an API uh, so people can uh, uh, stick to the to the API to to build a semantic merge tree, which is the the core part of the engine of the semantic merge. So. Uh, and to build uh, that free, it is needed to parse uh, a code, and maybe uh, one developer or or maybe if you want, you can build that parser and transform uh, the contents of the file into a specific tree that that is acceptable for the semantic merge API. Okay. Yeah. Actually, in our public forum, we have a, a post explaining how to create your own parser. Uh, right now, up to now, we have two uh, custom parsers that are done by our users. The first one is uh, PowerShell scripts, and the second one is Delphi. Uh, the information is in our public forum, which is plasticsem.net, and there you will find if you decide to write your own parser for uh, this kind of uh, Unity uh, formats, um, you will be able to 
to start working on it if, if you want. We allow the users to write their custom parsers or semantic maps. Okay, more questions are related with the locking system. Uh, a question from Joss, another one from Gary. Uh, well, uh, the locking with multiple branches. Uh, the lock is done at item level uh, and, it, and also in a distributed way. So we assign a UI for each item. So, so if the item related with that UI is, is tried to, to check it out in another workspace or another working copy of any other developer, the system will tell you that that file is, is locked. So no matter uh, which, which branch is tried to, to be checked out, right? And another one uh, regarding logs, uh, well, the logs are configured in a text file in a server and you have to type uh, the, um, the patterns of the files that uh, are under uh, the locking system. For instance, you can tell that only uh, uh, .cs files uh, must be checked out in an exclusive way, uh, locking them, or, or a directory pattern, or, or whatever. read it. Uh, I didn't understand is the custom parser for semantic already available or plan? It's it's already uh, available for, for users. So if you enter in our forum plasticscm.net you will see a section which is semantic merge and there you will see a, a small section regarding custom parsers and you will find documentation and samples. Okay, question, question is, is how does PlasticSCM handle the, the merging of binary files? Uh, well, of binary files, yeah. Um, sorry, I, I think I was muted. I was explaining uh, the binary, uh, sorry, the binary uh, merge. Uh, for the for a binary merge, it means that you cannot read what's inside. Uh, otherwise, you will be implementing uh, this preview custom tool. Uh, if it's a really binary merge, you will see a, a three-way merge window where you have to select one of the destination, base, or source contributors okay it's as simple as that okay that I was also speaking about uh, that's why we implemented the exclusive lock okay uh, if you are uh, using the exclusive lock you can reduce uh, those merge operations that are regarding binary files seems that we don't have more questions, but we have the X-Links topic still under the table, uh, above the table. So I'm going to be creating an X-Links and showing you how to create uh, 
the thing that is similar than its submodules, modules, that is even more powerful. So meanwhile, I'm creating this scenario. If you have any more questions, please uh, just ask, and uh, Jesus will be in charge of answering them. So uh, let me explain what I'm doing. Uh, for this example, I'm going to be creating a new uh, repository, which is these libraries. Okay, the library is going to be just having, I'm going to reuse this workspace to use the libraries repository. I'm going to switch to the main branch. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm working in the libraries repository. What I'm going to do is just creating an example, okay? I'm going to create a new file, uh, which is going to be uh, myleaf.dll, okay? It is just an example. And I'm going to be adding this content into the new repository. Pending changes, add, and that's all. The branch is closed. I have you change it and now I want this content uh, to be linked to a global one, a bigger one. So in order to do that I will go back to my uh, Angry Demo workspace and let me uh, review where I'm working. So I'm working in the main branch, cool. So in order to link this content, I don't know, imagine that you need to uh, link this repository in this directory, okay? So create xlinks. This is going to be leave xlink. Uh, the server is going to be localhost. I'm, as I'm working uh, locally, the repository is going to be libraries. And the change that I want to link is the number one. Okay, and I'm also use these xlinks as readable. That means that I will be able to change the items under this xlink. Okay, so commit the version. Go to the pending changes. Finish it add in an xlink, commit items, and update. Okay, now let me search for uh, leaf xlink, and I have my my, my leaf DLL, okay? Uh, just an attest, okay? If I add a new one, my second leaf DLL, you will see that you can continue working from your your, low, your global repository, which is Angry Demo, but you are actually using the XLinked one, which is the, the library that you can review in this column that is targeting the library's uh, repository. So let me add it, pending changes, and commit. Okay, you can review that the repository is libraries, okay, but you are still working with Angry Demo. Uh, and in the branch explorer, of course, a new change that is created with this new added item. But if you go to the other workspace that was working with libraries, you will see that also a new change that is created by adding this one. Okay, so you can evolve your history using one global xlink uh, the smaller ones. Okay, it's very useful. And of course, if you create a new branch and you add new content in the branch a new branch in the library's uh, repository will be created. It's awesome how we can handle uh, these X-Links. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's, it's more powerful than Git submodules. It can, uh, more action can be performed over X-Links. Yeah, yeah, even can you can define a, uh, how to uh, uh, the branches, branches in the X-Link repository, repository are created if they have the, uh, they can have they have to have the same name as the branch you are working on the main repository or something like that. Yeah, of course. For example, in this one, I'm having this rule. It means that all the content that I will do in the main branch, it means that in the target repository is going to be also stored in the main branch. But you can change this one by saying, for example, if I'm working in the main branch, maybe I want in the destination to store the changes into the slash 64 bits release, okay, instead of main. Okay, that's that's an example. It's pretty useful. We have uh, in our documentation, this is uh, all displayed, so you can review it. And of course, if you have more questions, you can write us to support or to our uh, online forums. 
and we will be happy to, to answer you. So I think we have more questions. Um, uh, Robin is asking us if we can update certain part of a project. I, I guess that he's talking about x links. Uh, there's a there's a way to do it uh, using our Gocket feature, uh, but that's uh, that's a, a, an advanced feature that requires more time to explain it. Okay, it's it, it's actually an advanced feature. It's easy to set up, but the explanation is is longer. So. Uh, if you want, you can write us to support, and we will be happy to to send you the steps to achieving what you need. So, uh, uh, Robin is is clarifying the question. No, I, I mean, if just want to update my code folder to last version, but no, my art set folder. No, that's that's not possible with plastic at the same as, as Git, for example. Um, if you switch your workspace or if you update your workspace, you are targeting change set. That means that you are loading loading a, a tree of changes, okay? So you cannot have partial uh, updates. So if you, for example, need to update assets but no projects, you cannot do it, okay? There's a way to do it, but it's for saving uh, hard drive space okay imagine that your project settings is a huge uh, directory that you don't want to download it from the server then you can right click it and add it to clock it that means that it will not be updated anymore at least you remove the the clock it tool but I, I don't know if it's the, the question you're asking if you just in a given moment you want to update assets but not project settings that's not possible you have to update your workspace. Um, so uh, Adrian is is asking us if this presentation will be available after for later view. Yes, actually we are recording it, so we are going to be uploading the video to YouTube. Uh, we will share it in our in our blog, the URL, and also the slides. Okay, so we are waiting for more questions. Okay, uh, Gary, uh, Gary is asking us what hooks uh, exists for integrating a plastic SEM with, for example, a continuous integration systems such as Team City. Well, actually, for Team City in particular, you don't need any hook because we support Team City by default. Okay, uh, but answering your questions regarding the hooks. Uh, we actually call them triggers. So uh, we have a command which is list trigger types, I think. Uh, no, so trigger types. Okay, we have a great number uh, of triggers. For example, um, let me. Yeah, this one. So we have a, a great number of them. For example, before adding items into plastic, uh, and after and before. Uh, after on before also for checking, check out, may workspace, set the selector, which is actually very similar to update, uh, make a new repository, remove a repository, create a branch, create a label, make an attribute, make a code review because Plastic SEM allows you by default which, uh, with the regular installer, you have a code review system that can be used to review the changes in the code. Can, I can show you very fast regarding that one. So we have uh, edit review, edit code review triggers, update, client checkout. All these uh, triggers are server, server side triggers. These ones are client side. So for the client, you can choose when the client check out a file, when the client check in a file, uh, after modifying the security, uh, when you push content, replication read, replication write. So we have a great number of, of triggers to um, integrate Plastic with other systems. But for Team City, we support, uh, we have a plugin that works with Team City. So um, uh, Josh, you is asking us if the Git Sync feature works with Macintosh. 
OS. Uh, yes, it works in any of our uh, uh, distributed flavors. Uh, it's uh, all the features are for the for all the platforms. So everything is working in plus in in Windows, uh, Mac OS, and all the Linux flavors you can imagine, or almost. Uh, uh, Benoit Felletier is asking us what I mean is every time I change a texture the whole texture will be uploaded to Git, right? Instead of only the diff. Yes, yes. Uh, well, actually in Git it works with Delta revisions. Uh, plastic, we store the full content compressed. It allows us to perform faster. Okay, uh, for uh, operation like annotate differences and so on, update and so on. So uh, in plastic, all the all the um, texture is storage into into the, into the repository. If you feel that the repository is, is increasing the size a lot, as I as I told you before, uh, you can archive revisions. So that will uh, free memory in the in the server side. So, do we have more questions? No, at the moment. Okay, uh, we are still uh, receiving questions, so please uh, don't be shy. If you have any question regarding the uh, Plastic SCM system or the Unity plugin, please, uh, this is your moment. Uh, Gary is asking us, so there's one, there's only one copy of any file storage locally at a time. Yes? That's right, yes. Previous revisions are held on the server, or do you store one copy for each branch? No, 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 no. Uh, if you are afraid about what Perforce do, uh, creating branches, we don't perform like that, okay? That's why we are extremely faster compare, comparing with Perforce, okay? When you update your workspace, um, you are only receiving one copy of the file at a time, okay? Uh, and the rest is on the server side in the repository. And when you create a branch, uh, only a branch is created. The content is not duplicated or some strange things like Perforce does, okay? As you can see, creating a branch is a matter of seconds. It doesn't matter of the repository side. It always, it will always take milliseconds to be created, okay? So this is the task 02. The task is created. It, it is not tied to the repository content. I know that with Perforce, if you try to create a branch or a stream, it takes more time. In Plastic, it's, it's not that way. OK, so um, Gary is saying, if I switch between two branches, which have large binary files, it must retransmit the entire set of change binary files across the wire on each brand change. Uh, yes, actually, if the if the binary file has been changed from one branch to the other, Plastic will be download the content to your workspace. We have a if you feel that the, your network is in, not enough, not fast enough to handle this environment, uh, you can set up a, a Plastic proxy, proxy server, which will help you. Uh, for those uh, communication between the server and the client when you need to download a big amount of content. Okay, uh, uh, we have another question from, from Adrian uh, uh, asking uh, the Plastic ACM option is grayed out on the settings. Uh, well, maybe you don't have a pro version of Unity or a team version from Unity. Also, also it can happen, happen that, that uh, okay, okay, in uh, the settings, if, if this is your case, your case maybe it's because the, uh, the project, project settings are, are currently checked in, and to change, to change it, you have to check out, check out uh, uh, the project, the editor settings, settings yeah, in the area, area at the bottom, bottom of the screen, and then, and then you can switch to another version, version control system. Right. right. As you can see, once I checked out uh, the editor settings, it appears as a change in the ongoing changes. Right. Okay. Gary is asking us if, if our server acts as a local cache. 
uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, uh, as a proxy cat or proxy server, we have two different uh, servers. Uh, the first one is the is the regular plastic SEM server, uh, and the second one is the proxy cache server. Uh, the first one can be used as a, a huge uh, cache if you are uh, working distributed, uh, but if not, if you are working centralized, uh, you can set up a cache server in the middle of your network and it will be used as a cache, speeding up all the communication between uh, the plastic server and the client. So we have two different servers, the, the plastic regular server and the cache server. Uh, it, it acts like a, a file cache server. Okay, so we still have time for more questions. If you want to uh, create any scenario in plastic or uh, something uh, you want to be tested, this is the time. For this demo, we only perform one merge operation, but I have to say that plastic has the best uh, merge engine out there. Okay, uh, Git is very good merging things, but as Git is not able to version directories, we do. Uh, our merge system is much better because we can handle different, much more different uh, cases. All all this information is is documented in our web page, so you can you can review the cases where Git fails and and when plastic uh, success. So it's it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look for plastic SEM merge machine. Uh, in our website, uh, you will see a comparison between uh, different SCMs in different scenarios, right? Okay, uh, I think meanwhile we received the last questions. I'm going to be showing the, uh, the uh, integrated code review system uh, very fast, okay, because it's also uh, some kind of uh, big thing, okay, going on. But let me let me uh, show you very fast how Plastic creates code review. So uh, this change it. Let's uh, say that I need to review it uh, all the work that has been done here. So I create new code review for this change it. So this is going to be change uh, review uh, number one, whatever. Okay. Uh, we have an status which is the first one is pending, and I, we also have an assignee. Let me change. In this case, I'm going to be using manual, okay, uh, myself to be uh, the reviewer. Okay, so uh, I cannot have a number uh, dash here. So, okay, let's go. And this is when you uh, start uh, uh, reviewing the code. The first one is just uh, a space there, but here we have real content. So, right to know is obviously a, a bad change. So, change this. Okay, and all the contents are storage here. Okay, if you start a conversation, you will see all the contents of the of the conversation in this panel under here. When you close the code review, you can go back to them by opening the code reviews and right clicking on it. That's all. Very easy, uh, very powerful, easy to use, and and it can it, it it is inside Plastic SEM, so you you don't need to install anything else. Okay, so Gary is also is, is having a new question. If you have pending changes on a branch, can you create a new branch and propagate those changes uh, to later commit? Okay, yeah, totally possible. Let me I want to explain it by doing a real sample because it's is where you understand everything better. So imagine that I have uh, these two files deleted and I also have uh, I don't know let me say that I cannot find editor uh, this one okay uh, so for example I'm going to be moving or rename it this one to check invalid shaders and the content is going to be uh, oh, it's going to be opening Visual Studio uh, which takes a lot of time so uh, let me open in Windows Explorer and open in the Notepad++. It's going to be faster than Visual Studio. Okay, so for example, check 
in valid shaders, whatever. Okay, save it. And now imagine that you are working in the grown branch, as, as you uh, told. Uh, you are working in the main branch, as you can see in this representation of your pending changes. Uh, and then you need to uh, move those changes into, sorry, into a different branch, or even more, Plastic allows you to create a middle state change set, which is the self feature. Okay, so you have two options. Instead of committing, you can right click or uh, clicking here. You can check in the changes to a different branch or self it. Okay, checking the changes just will put this content into a new branch, and selving the changes will be creating a, a, a some kind of change it in the repository, okay? You will see. So we have the self number two. So uh, let me go to selves. This is a new self. And now I can apply this self in whatever branch I want. So if I go to the branch explorer and maybe I switch to this new branch, I can go to the selves and apply the self. It's going to be applied like a merge because actually it needs to merge the content with the workspace content. So apply the self, you have the content you self, process it, and finally, in depending changes, you recover the content and you are free to go. Okay, and that's all. Obviously, you can just select the option to commit the changes into a different branch and it's going to be much, much more or less the same, okay? In this case, you are still having the self because maybe it's interesting or other developer to apply this change in the workspace. Okay. Even given you can ha you can uh, move your current bending changes to a different branch, but without checking them in. So it will appear as bending changes, but in another different branch rather than the the working one. Right. You can choose if you just move the changes or checking the changes to another branch. Okay, Gary is also asking us, I see cherry pick from, can you stage part of a file or for commit? Well, not at the file level, but yes for a change at level, okay? If you are not, if you are merging this main branch into a different branch and you don't want the whole content, you can use the cherry pick to select, for example, only the changes done in the change at number eight, which is this one, okay? If you are interested in only this change, in only this change set, you can use the cherry pick option, but only for a change set, uh, or a range of changes, but not for revisions. So Gary, what you are asking about the, the parts of a file, it is not possible because uh, we only allow you to cherry pick uh, the full change set. Of course, after the cherry pick, if you are only interested in some changes, you can override them or whatever, okay? It's possible, but the tool is not able to offer you that. Uh, Gary is also asking, do you have a native OS X client or must, it, uh, must be run through X11? Uh, X uh, no, we don't have a native Macintosh client yet. We, it's in our roadmap, but right now uh, it's using Mono uh, for both Linux and Macintosh. So right now it's not, it is not there yet. It will be, but not yet. Uh, Gary is asking us, do you have your roadmap or parts posted online? No, actually, I don't think so. No, it's not. Our roadmap is not. Uh, it's not public. Okay, so I think we don't have more questions. Uh, 
also we, uh, we have one more. Can you show a scene merge example? Uh, are you talking about a binary file? Well, actually, let me let me create pretty pretty fast the scenario. Okay, uh, by creating a new branch, this is going to be pretty fast. Last sample. Okay, uh, let me switch it. And um, for example, uh, let me I don't know. I'm going to be modifying this one. Uh, so. Oh. Gary is asking us, okay, Gary, uh, we are going to cover that uh, scenario. I'm going to send you uh, all the information in an email, okay? I, I think we have your email because you you log in into GoToMeeting. So uh, let me send you because it will require more time, okay? Um, I will send you the all the all the details about the merge you are asking. Is uh, I think it's supported, but I support it, but uh, let, me, let me send you the steps. Okay, so I think that's everything uh, we want to show you. Of course, uh, anything you need, uh, anything you find that you cannot understand or anything, you can write us to support at codifesoftware.com or use our public forums, which is uh, plasticscm.net. Uh, we can attend you and resolve all your questions. Thank you very much for your time and see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank goodbye. you. Goodbye.